Hello, it's another edition of Plus Report, a compilation of the stories and events that made the news recently. Welcome, I'm Jacinta Obiupo. The family of slain Jumoke Oyeleke, who was allegedly killed by a stray bullet during the Yoruba Nation rally in Ojota, Lagos, is demanding justice and succor. During her lifetime, Jumoke worked in an ice cream shop to assist her mother in bringing up her young ones. She was displaying drinks at her bus shop in a compound close to the rally ground when security men chased some agitators onto the premises amid shootings. Plus, TV Africa's correspondent, Dr. Momo, has more. The once boisterous Ojota home of the Oyelikis was a shadow of itself when Plus TV Africa visited. There was an eerie silence in the compound located at Bayo Ushinawa Street, Ojota, as residents spoke in whispers. Still in the mood of pain and regret, the mother of the deceased shared her pain with Plus TV Africa and the personality of her late daughter. Mansura Jumake Uyeleke. That is 25 years. Family members of the deceased also bear their minds. It's a gunshot, not that somebody shook him with knife, and he's not selling paraga. She's selling bobo and ice cream. That is what he said. And she's selling the shop. Where they stay is not okay. You know why? The, the husband house, where they are living before, they have given it to the developer. I want them to tell us the real truth, that the girl was shot. And I want justice to be served. On the controversy over who shot at the deceased, they say... Immediately the protest where the protesters were coming back, the the police started shooting gun and tear gas and spraying hot water at them. So immediately they are running, you get they said the lady come outside from the shop. Immediately she she heard gunshots. You know? Immediately she heard gunshots, she ran out of the shop, started running with the people around, you understand? That's when the ghost shot hit her. Now this is number 59A Bayo Oshinawa Street, Ogudu, in Ojota, Lagos State, where um, the mother of the deceased puts up. Uh, now it's a very sad situation for them because um, the deceased in question has been a very helpful um, child to her mother because um, she does partnership with her mother in bringing up her younger ones by working hard. The mother, Ifeo Lua Oyeleke, who was saddened by the sudden turn of events, had disclosed that her daughter was a 25-year-old and not a 14-year-old as widely reported. Destiny Momo for Plus TV Africa. Well, we do sympathize with the family of the deceased and hope they get the justice they are asking for. The Lagos State Police Command has arrested 1,320 suspects and recovered 110 arms between May the 1st and July the 13th. The Commissioner of Police, Hakim Odumusu, said this while briefing newsmen. Destiny Momo once again has more. The Commissioner of Police says recently the command established some tactical units to conform with and tackle the new dimensions of social vices in the state, which has paid off. Odomosu says any cases that were recorded have been unraveled, while many suspects arrested have been prosecuted. He says isolated cases of robbery in traffic have also been tackled. The cases Arm robbery, we have six cases, courtesy, five cases, defilement, two cases, rape, two cases, unlawful possession of firearms, eight cases, 
stealing just a case and being factory one case. Now, I'm a resource that we have here for today, 15, consists of two. The commissioner of police displays had drugs and weapons recovered from the suspects. So you can imagine the ammunition. So somebody keeping all this that we covered. So this one is a real one. So it's an English pistol. So all these ones are English pistols. So that's how. So we are mopping up. And I want to see the opportunity, opportunity now to tell about to the public. So whatever arms they have in a legal lay, they should submit. Some of the suspects confessed to some of these crimes they were paraded for. Now, person carry the gun, give me, say make a help and keep on. The person they give me money, say make a help and keep gun for him. So, and sometimes, if they want maybe some Omoibo shop where they, they sell rice, then they carry me for bike sometimes, carry me go there. My cross bag, I put a uh, local pistol inside my cross bag. I was in joint, drinking beer. So when I was a man, now come to my side. He now asked me that, what was inside your bag? I said, nothing is inside my bag. He now dragged the bag on my neck. I just saw police just owe me. And I didn't know maybe the guy is worth anything. As police owe me, I just see that the guy is money and took back down. The police boss reiterates that the command under his watch will relate with other stakeholders to improve an already established formidable security networking in Lagos while assuring that the suspects will soon be charged to court. Destiny Momo for Plus TV Africa. The Commissioner for Police revealed that the command arrested 66 suspected armed robbers, 72 suspected courtists, and 47 murder suspects from May to date. Now, the governor of Adamawa State, Omaru Fintiri, doesn't think the attack on Damna community has anything to do with insurgency. He believes it was the result of a reprisal over land disputes. The governor made us known when he paid a condolence visit to the victims of the attack to see things for himself and assess the extent of damage. Dabna in the Gubwa district of Hong, local government area of Adamawa state, is still a shadow of itself. Most of the people have abandoned their homes to scamper for safety. Few women, men and the elderly are living in the ruins of the community as they mourn their dead. Governor Maruf Interior of Adamawa state, in company of the Speaker of the State House of Assembly and other government officials, is in Dabna. He is received by the district head of Dugubwa and some community leaders. Governor Fintiri goes round for an on-the-spot assessment of the attack. Houses and food stores looted and burnt. He also commiserates with members of the local vigilante whose leader was killed during the attack. He applauds them for their efforts in providing security for the community. Four or five days ago, to be precise, 21 or 25 people were killed here, gruesomely. Uh, investigation is showing and indicating to us, really, the activities of Boko Haram across the northeast sub-region. But this one that had happened, there is no indication that it's Boko Haram. Uh, investigation from the security agency is showing that uh, it's either a repressal or a traditional ruler has sold a farm to a certain group of people who are demanding vacations out of the farmland by the locals. Well, investigation is going on. But I want to assure you that whoever that is found wanting in this investigation will not go unpunished. The district head of Dugubwa, Simon Matthew, appeals for more security formations in the area while asking the people to always report any suspicious movement by any strange person within the community. Our appeal is uh, to help secure the, the area. This place is uh, very close to the Sambesa forest and uh, we appeal to the government to assist in ensuring that the area is blocked from further penetration by these uh, uh, gunmen. Although 25 persons have so far been confirmed killed following early morning attack on Wednesday, no more say has been restored in the area. And now, 
that people are beginning to return to their abodes. The next story has to do with the controversy surrounding the ban on open grazing in southern Nigeria. The action of the region's governors has been criticized by the Gan Ala Fulani group. The group says no southerner will get a vote from any of its members for the 2023 uh, presidency. Osaroge Ogbonwa takes a look at this reaction and the response by some leaders of the south. On the 11th of May, the Forum of Southern Governors announced a ban on open grazing in all 17 southern Nigerian states. And at their latest meeting earlier this month, they decided that the ban would take effect from September the 1st. The forum set a timeline of Wednesday, the 4th of September, 2021, for the promulgation of the anti-grazing law in all its member states. Anti-open, sorry, anti-open grazing law. In response, the Gan Ala Fulani Group and Mieti Ala Kautahuri Association cautioned the southern governors against the move, describing it as an intimidating tactic to bring power to the south in 2023. The Secretary General of Gan Ala Fulani, Ibrahim Abdullahi, reinforced these views on PLOS TV's The Breakfast. We have uh, received the news of the resolution of the southern governors as a shock and surprise, uh, and we feel that it is unfortunate, you know, that uh, you can threaten the, the, the livelihood of about 17 million Nigerians living within your state, and at the same time, you are asking them to vote for you from 2023. In response, representatives of Pan Niger Delta Forum and Johannes Ndigbo have stated that the ban is irreversible and that some of these groups should be ignored. And so our position remains that open grazing is, is, is the ban on open grazing is, 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 has, has come to stay. And that in 2023, power must shift to the south. I see what is happening. Uh, the southern governors have already given it to that. The, about six governors from the north have already given it to that. So it does seem that it's getting for them to live in the house. Uh, the flying headsmen and uh, whoever are up to the time, you know, we try and they will cheat you. Know, if they move men, then ultimately it's a job. All sides have stated the need for dialogue and the need to merge ideas on how to systematically end open grazing in Nigeria. We are not against open grazing, uh, uh, no banning open grazing as it is. But we are against a situation where you just wake up and stop open grazing without providing any alternative. Nobody is threatening the life of 17 million elders. What we are saying is that, look, this practice is not tenable in today's world. September 1st is less than two months away. What happens on that day could have a big impact on the 2023 general elections. You're watching Plus Reports. There is more after this break.